Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Elgar's Second Symphony in E flat major. And I'd like to go through this great work exploring how the music's put together because I do believe that having some understanding of form in classical music can greatly aid our appreciation and enjoyment of it. Now, Elgar composed this work uh, between 1910 and 1911, although much of the material was sketched out many years before, even going back as far as 1903. So the music reflects a large part of Elgar's life uh, and inspiration. Elgar conducted the premiere on May the 24th, 1911. And Elgar's previous works, of course, were hugely successful. The first symphony was a massive blockbuster uh, <laughs> symphony at the time. Uh, you know, played all over Europe, uh, many performances, the violin concerto. But then the symphony number no. two, it took a while for the public to get it. And even today, maybe people uh, are not as familiar with this symphony as they are the first symphony. But it truly is a wonderful piece of work. You know, Elgar himself said it very much uh, expresses his soul. Um, ostensibly, the work is uh, dedicated to the memory of King Edward VII. Um, and there's the title page there. Um, but people have often thought, actually, you know, it's, the music's really about far more personal things to Elgar's life, some of which we might touch upon as we go through the music. Also, interestingly, we have a quote from the poet Shelley. Um, rarely, rarely comest thou, spirit of the light. And uh, I mean, what are we to make of this quotation? There's a sense uh, when you read the poem that the spirit of the light is uh, this sense of joy, a sense of exhilaration, a sense of peace, a sense of wonder at the world sense of reveling in the beauty of the world if you read the poem but of course for Elgar who suffered with many bouts of depression the spirit of the light really was a rare visitor <laughs> and uh, but it seems that he was certainly going through um, a buoyant mood when he wrote uh, a lot of this music because it kind of brims with life and uh, there's this real kind of joie de vivre about uh, this music, particularly the first movement. The first movement is this uh, this wonderful uh, piece in sonata form. We begin with this wonderful bracing melody, full of wide intervals, and uh, this theme returns throughout the symphony. It's a kind of a motto, I guess, and we even hear it right at the closing, uh, and we hear it right to the closing bars of this symphony, and it goes like this. Really full of the joys of life. Here is the spirit of the light. Real kind of uh, stirring, uplifting music. And in typical Elgarian fashion, you know, it really is, rather than one melody, it's these fragments of melodies which all come together in this intoxicating effect. You know, we're just swept away on this tide of, of melody uh, in such a beautiful, stunning and joyous way. Eventually we get to a transition where the music uh, suddenly quickens. And so on. Then we come to the second subject group. It's this rather dreamy uh, feel to it. And there's actually two main ideas in this group. The first idea goes like this. beautiful melody and then the texture just thins out and we hear this rather solitary line in the cellos uh, which goes like this
we go back to that first idea then in this glowing orchestration and we have a coda where the animato um, rehearsal mark 15 in the score a very long uh, coda um, again very much in the spirit of the first subject although we don't really hear that uh, spirit of delight theme in its entirety in the coda coda to um, blazes and then it fades away now we come to my favourite moment in the whole symphony or one of two favourite moments actually the beginning of the development and here we have this mysterious and incredibly beautiful highly chromatic music it's a new idea which has sometimes been called the ghost theme and uh, like the spirit of the light theme this returns it returns later actually in the scherzo of this symphony. It goes like this. It's kind of shifting uh, lines. Kind of nocturne-like music, music of the night. Uh, that's been remarked on before. Interspersed between this beautiful and mysterious music, we hear snatches of the Spirit of Delight theme. Um, so listen out for that. Then the, the ghost theme kind of moves away. We think that's it. Maybe it was some kind of uh, phantom apparition or whatever you want to say. But then it comes back a bit stronger. We hear it in the, the cellos. Such a beautiful and strange melody, it really haunts you this music. Once that's over, the development seems to become more normal, if you like. Uh, and it builds up to a climax, uh, and famously we have this big pause in the music just before the recapitulation. Da, 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 da. Da, da. and so on, back into the swing of things. Um, it's said that Elgar wasn't particularly happy with that, that you know, but um, I think it's, you know, really uh, a very memorable way to go back into the recapitulation. We have the Codetta again. Um, we have the second subject, Codetta, and then we have this rather and then we hear these timpani, and then um, if you're following the score at rehearsal mark 63, we reach the coda, uh, we hear these timpani beats. Reminds me a bit of the coda to Brahms' first symphony, the, f the first movement of that work. And we hear these timpani beats, and we eventually get to this uh, virtuosic um, orchestral gesture to uh, end this remarkable movement. The second movement is really a funeral march and people have often said well surely this is the funeral march for Edward VII and that may be true um, but it's also worth noting that two of Edward Elgar's closest friends had passed away uh, during this time and people have often said well maybe it was really about them August Jaeger and, and Alfred Edward Roadward. Um, it's an incredibly powerful and moving piece of music. It certainly recalls the slow movement to Beethoven's Eroica Symphony, again in C minor and a funeral march. And in terms of its form, it's really a truncated sonata form. Exposition, re recapitulation with no development. We begin with this uh, introductory music, very soft. And then we 
we go to the first subject proper, which is this bell-like funereal music led by the trumpets. <laughs> And this typically beautiful Elgarian string scoring we have. rather whimsical um, transition theme in the with the winds. And then we come to the second subject which uh, starts in a very soft subdued chorale like way on the strings but builds to these incredibly intense outpourings of grief and emotion. Um, we begin with this idea. And so on. Very beautiful romantic music. And then we have this rather Wagnerian build up, shifting through the gears um, chromatically, and eventually we hit this in F major. We hear the trumpets. Then the violins go. Something like that. It's very really wonderful music, so moving. Um, eventually we get back to that transition again. That rather wistful idea. And then we're back in C minor for the recapitulation of the first subject. This time with this exquisite oboe solo over the top. Um, in triplets, actually it's a core anglais and an oboe, but the oboe plays the active part of these triplets. It's incredibly beautiful, weaving in and out. The violins are subdivided. Exquisite orchestration in this, uh, this recapitulation of the first subject. Um, we then go into the second subject again with those glorious climaxes. And then we come to the coda where we have the transition idea again. Uh, and we hear a quote of the Spirit of the Light uh, theme, the motto theme of the symphony from the first movement before we hear the music of the introduction again, which rounds off this incredibly beautiful and uh, moving funeral march. The Rondo is a terrific piece. It's so exciting. Um, and I think there's one absolute stroke of genius in this movement as well, which I'll come on to. The A section is actually a collection of uh, two or three ideas, but the chief amongst them is this. Goes like this. Then upper major third. And there's this wonderful play between three and two in this movement. You never quite know whether, you're never quite sure where the bar is. I guess Brahms was good at that, wasn't he? 
you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, it's a real kind of uh, off kilter, quirky dance quality to it. Uh, the beats running across the bar. Eventually, the music moves into C minor, where we have the second idea of this A section. Typical Algarian music. After this uh, interruption, we're, we're back to the main A idea. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Kind of developed a bit, passed around the orchestra. We hear these loud eruptions of this uh, motif. And then things calm down and we're into the B section. We hear this on the violins. hear this idea as well in the, in the winds. Check that out. Um, eventually we go back to a reprise of the A section. And then we come to, I think, an absolute stroke of genius in this symphony. Remember in the first movement we heard what's called, often called the ghost motif, that night, mysterious, sinister sounding music, incredibly beautiful sounding music. But it comes back here, and it clearly means something to Elgar, this music. Maybe it represents his sense of depression, I don't know. Um, but it's plaguing him, it's haunting him, this music. And this is the second and last time we hear it, to a thrilling effect. The timpanis uh, tapping out triplets, da, 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 and we hear the tune. And then we hear bashing uh, percussion, da, 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 da. And the brass, da, 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 da. It's, an, it's one of those moments in a symphony where your the hairs come up on the back of your neck. Um, I believe Elgar was thinking of a, a passage from a, one of the poems by Whitman here with, that someone's um, stamping on someone's grave. Uh, and it has that effect, you know, it, it's just so thrilling, so strange, so odd, the, the kind of chromaticism in it, but so incredibly moving as well, beautiful, in an odd, in a, in a crazy way. It really is a moment of absolute genius. And it is so wonderful that Elgar brings this mysterious music back again. Um, it yeah, adds, of course, unity as well as the spirit of the light theme, of course, to the symphony. We then come back to the kind of scherzo theme or the rondo theme as such for the last time and then we have um, this incredibly exciting explosive coda. And by the way, if you want to follow the form more closely with bar numbers um, or actually in this case with rehearsal numbers, uh, check out the description below if you have a score. The finale, again, is in sonata form. And um, we begin with this uh, noble idea. Again, very Elgarian, um, like this. variations of that theme really that makes up the first subject then we have this uh, rousing transition quite Brahmsian and we hear this uh, uh, rising bass line we eventually get to the second subject it's rather stirring 
Um, A brief four bar codetta before we go into the development, uh, which is based on that transition idea. It's thoroughly worked out as well as the first subject in, uh, in snatches. Uh, we come to a passage at 149 rehearsal number, which to me sounds very Marlarian. Um, I don't know how familiar Elgar was with Marler's music. But it sounds like a passage, I think, from uh, the Fifth Symphony a little bit, the, the, the way it develops there. Eventually, we have some rather Brahmsian sounding music, perhaps reminiscent of Brahms's Third Symphony. We have this idea, recognise this. One, two, three. You know, a bit like Brahms's Third Symphony there. Um, so listen out for that near the end of the development and then eventually we get back to the first subject. The transition. And then uh, one final uh, uh, glorious fortissimo rendition of the second subject. And then we have this magical coda. Uh, the music seems to really thin down, evaporate. Maybe this is music which puzzled the original audience. Elgar famously said at the premiere to the concert, you know, to the leader, uh, you know, Billy, what's wrong with them? They look like a bunch of stuffed pigs. They didn't seem to get this symphony the first time round, and it's probably the, the finale, the end of the finale, I think, which probably threw them. It's a rather soft, beautiful, um, and gorgeously scored uh, ending to this symphony. And lo and behold, what do we hear? The motto theme again, the spirit of delight the theme. Very similar again to Brahms's third symphony. I think there's strong parallels between those works. In the flute. Da, 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 da. Such a wonderful way to end this symphony, Elgar's second symphony. If you don't know it, check it out. It's a great work. And again, I've put the uh, form in, the, in more detail in the description below. If this is your kind of thing, please click like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or any other pieces you want me to look at, please put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.